Well, hey, Life Science, hope you're doing well. When you watch this video, um, going over the first quiz that we've taken this year um, to help out people online and also just people in the classroom being able to review for the test coming in a few weeks. Um, so let's go through this together. Number one, science can tell us if ceiling is wrong. Well, remember, science is all about data, observation. Science is not about morality or the supernatural. So wrong is a morality question. It's an ethical question. And so that's false. Okay, number two, an example of a scientific theory is gravity. Remember, theories are explanations. Laws simply state at our purposes in seventh grade life science. So there's the law of gravity. The gravity is a law, so that is false. Number three, an example of a scientific law is every object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. That's one of Newton's laws. That's true. A scientific theory describes something in nature that is always true. With well, the key words, always, right? And so, for example, cell theory, we don't know where the first cell came from. Theory of evolution, um, we can't answer everything involving the theory of evolution. We weren't there to observe it. Um, so that's false. There's some things about theories that we do not, um, can't prove to be absolutely true. And that's why they're theories. Although they are backed, remember, they are backed by a lot of good science. A scientist would do research before developing a hypothesis. Definitely. Remember I told you our first question in the scientific method is, um, Ask a question, observe, and then you do research before developing an hypothesis. Science can answer all questions. Of course, the key word there, usually in true and false, is all. That's false. The dependent variable is the one scientists change in an experiment. Um, that's false. The independent variable, I change. The independent variable is the one the scientist changes. The first step in science is to do an experiment. That's false. Science always follows a linear step-by-step -step process. Remember, I told you science can go, you know, it's fluid. It can go back and forth. It doesn't follow this A to B, B to C, C to D. This is linear means a straight line. But science might go down here and go back and change something. It might stop here and revise the experiment. Um, so you got to do different things, okay? Um, science, a microgram is larger than a milligram. Well, that is also false. A microgram is smaller than a milligram. When I did, was discussing with you um, definitions of science, number 11, I told you the definition I asked you to memorize, but basically I was looking for the word natural um, written in a cohesive, coherent way. But science is the investigation and exploration of natural events and the knowledge gained from those investigations. Something around those lines was what I was looking for. Starting with multiple choice, what question would be most likely studied by scientists working in a field of physical science? Physical science deals with like forces and light and chemical reactions. So the best answer is D. The SI unit or the units that are used around the world in scientific labs and scientific um, communities for length is meters and mass is grams. Okay, so if you put inches and pounds for that, those are customary units used in America and a few other places, but that's not what scientists use around the world. We use meters for length and grams for mass, which is why I discussed in class with you. Also, hopefully in your notes. Um, while studying metabolism, scientists discovered that some microalgae produce large amounts of oil. They discovered that, um, they saw that, so that is an observation. Okay, Which of the following is a good hypothesis? Well, I think, I think aren't the greatest wording uh, isn't the greatest wording for hypotheses. Um, if plants are given, then they will grow larger because, okay, remember this, it, hypothesis has to be able to be um, studied, undergone experiments. So that is the best answer. The best answer is C. I think plants would grow less than fertilizer because I don't know. Hopefully no one picked that one. Um, 17, um, I threw, to be honest, I threw this question out. If you got it right, I give you extra credit. It was poorly worded, but Below, list something in nature that all three different scientists would study. When I say three different scientists, I meant the scientists in the fields of life, physical, and earth and space. And some of you, um, some of you did that well. Um, some of you wrote one thing that all three would study, like soil. You know, soil is part of the earth. Soil has chemicals in it, which physical soil also helps life. You know, plants exist, so that's life. That's also good. Um, but some of you were confused and I didn't want you to be, um, you know, be unjust <laughs> with, with counting that. So that's what I was looking for. But for example, life would study animals, physical would study, 
uh, you know, light, earth and space would study planets. You know, that's something I was looking for to see if you were understanding what we were talking about. Um, moving on from there, we've got, there we go, sorry. Um, then we started, you know, converting. Um, we did our conversions, okay? So I'm going to do this um, in class right now briefly, but so what you have here is you're going from grams to kilograms, 2,345 grams. So remember, this is where the base unit is right here, okay? The blanks, base units, grams, liters, seconds, meters. And so we're going to kilo. And so I'm going to try to be doing this with a mouse, so it's not the greatest, but one, two, three. I moved to the left three times. So here's my decimal, one, two, three. And my answer, and I really need to pad, but they're expensive, 2.345. That's my answer for kilograms. Okay, for number 19, I'm still starting in, in the base unit, but I'm moving to milli. So one, two, three. And I moved to the right three times. So this one, I had three, five, five, and there's my decimal, right? Decimals after the whole number, and I go one, two, three. And then I put, remember, the little phrase, eggs in the egg baskets. Sorry, I know this is horrible handwriting, but I'm doing it with a mouse. 355,000, and there's where the decimal will be. 355,000 is the answer for that milliliters. Um, for number 20, the t determining what class you're in, it might be different. One class solved for micro units. Um, so if you're starting with micro, remember micro is not a jump up one. Remember, we discussed that in class. It's a jump up three. And if you're confused, you could see that um, micro up here, micro up here is negative six to negative three. So that's a jump of three, okay? So what, what we start here, we started with micro and we went to milli, that's a jump of three. So one, two, three, we move to the left. And so the answer is 750, sorry, I know, 755 millimeters, okay? Some of, for the other class, I, I changed this to centimeters, cm. And so we went from here over one. And so that literally, you just would have added a zero. So you have seven, five, five, zero, zero, zero. And so you have your decimal and you move over with one and there's your zero there. So this is actually 7,550,000 millimeters, okay? For the last two questions, and sorry, this, this changed a little bit since I was adjusting this for the video. Um, 154 milliseconds, well, milli's right here. You move one, two, three to seconds. And so that's point one five four it is helpful to put a zero in front of there for our purposes in life science i'm not going to be you know that strict about it but in future courses just be prepared that they'll expect a zero before that decimal if the empire state um so that's the answer there we move to the left three spaces and finally number 22 if the empire state building is 1454 feet tall 1454 feet tall how many meters is that well this is a t-chart you can't move the decimal with this and this is why i showed you this method initially and so it's very important. So what do we have? We have 1,454 feet. Okay. Whatever my unit is here, let me do a different color here. Whatever my unit is here, my family who likes LSU would be really proud of me right now, <laughs> would, goes down here. Okay. Whatever I'm trying to convert it to is up here. So this is meters. How in the world do I know what numbers to put here? I know what numbers to put there because I have my conversion right there. One foot equals point three zero four eight meters. So what I do with these two numbers, I multiply them and divide by the product of the bottom, which is just one. And so when you multiply 1454 by points, 3048, your answer, you should have received an answer, 400, 443 four, 
Wow, that's really bad. <laughs> four four three point. I don't know what's happening. That's crazy. Let's just get out of that. Yeah, sorry, I'm still kind of learning this program, of course. Wow, that's something else. Let me just drag over the calculator so you can see. <laughs> there you go, 443.179, so I wanted to show you that. You could round it 0.18, but you know, a lot of people just wrote that out. Remember, for math problems, um, partial credit is given if you showed your work. A lot of you didn't show your work, so if it was wrong, unfortunately, it was completely wrong. So. Anyways, hope this video was helpful. Hope it helps you answer, you know, some of the questions about why you got a certain question wrong. Some of y'all did really well. Some of us were, you know, still learning and still learning how to study it. And you know, it's been a long time since school, so um, we'll get we'll get better. We'll keep working together. But until next time, uh, God bless, guys.